Help support the North Omaha History Podcast by going to northomahahistory.com slash podcast, click on the Patreon icon, and become a patron for as little as a dollar a month. And we'd like to thank Jim Collison, Wanda Lewis, and Lori Schwartz for being patrons. Welcome to the North Omaha History Podcast with noted author and historian Adam Fletcher Sassy. Each week, Adam takes you on a guided tour through Omaha's dynamic past. When the Trans-Mississippi Exposition happened in North Omaha in 1898, the city wanted to make sure all visitors knew how easy it was to get to the site. Using some promotional materials from the time, Adam's written a history of streetcars in, in North Omaha in the 1890s. This history surely changed a lot between then and 1955 when the last streetcars ran in Omaha. Adam, tell us more. Steve, imagine the sound of horse hooves clippity clopping along a brick street, a cobblestone street, uh, with gorgeous tall trees around it and these magnificent houses and short squatty worker houses and bungalows lining the way. This was 24th Street in the 1880s. Uh, the Omaha Horse Railway was the kind of the precursor to electric streetcars around Omaha. It was driven by horses. It was, it had every, every streetcar had a horse car driver. Uh, some, some of the streetcars only had one horse. Some had four horses and it was just, you know, Horse poop everywhere because folks were getting on and off the horse-drawn streetcar. These, these horse-drawn streetcars went all over Omaha, uh, and they were really the earliest version of what became the streetcars that uh, eventually roamed everywhere. But North Omaha was special in that it was a really uh, developing area, and people saw the prominence of it. And so these horse-drawn streetcars, these really early streetcars, uh, went all the way up to Ames, uh, almost to Ames, all the, all the way past Lake Street. And they definitely formed that heart of North Omaha's uh, existence, those first streetcars that were drawn by horses. There was actually, the North Omaha was such an important place for these, for that company particularly, that they formed, or they, they built a, a horse corral uh, at 26th and Lake Street. And the magnificent thing, Steve, is that for the next hundred years and beyond all the way to today, that area still serves as a transportation hub for the city of Omaha. It's magnificent. It went from being a horse-drawn streetcar uh, kind of storage area along with this um, corrals for the horses, and then it became a streetcar barn, and then it became a bus barn, and then it became uh, the transportation repair shop for the city of Omaha, and just now it's beginning to transition into its next life, but definitely a magnificent story right there. So these streetcars in North Omaha had such an important part, and it all began back in the 1870s. By the 1880s, we had the horses all over the place. And then in the 1890s, we had a couple different competing technologies going on. We had our streetcar that was happening. We had a cable car that was going up and down uh, Cumming Street. It was put in by Dr. Sam Mercer himself to get up to his mansion, to get up to the Walnut Hill development at 40th and Cumming. And the developments along the way, including Bemis Park and Orchard Hill and uh, the, even the Gold Coast. Um, the, the new Omaha Gold Coast. So there was lots going on in this area in North Omaha with these streetcars. But really the transformation became uh, and, and took hold in the 1890s, late 1890s, early 1900s. A man formed a company that became the Omaha Council Bluffs Railway and Bridge Company. Uh, and they really consolidated all of these different competing technologies and brought them into prominence around Omaha by bringing them all and, and making them important and, and laying lines everywhere. So in North Omaha, there were streetcars that went up 24th Street. There were streetcars that went up 17th Street, eventually 16th Street, uh, eventually uh, 4th Street, all the way up to Florence at one point, all the way out to the Forest Lawn Cemetery at one point. There were streetcars that went up 40th that went to 42nd and Grand so there was so much going on with these streetcars running all over North Omaha. There was a great guy, his name was Richard Orr, who actually tracked all of this and wrote a big, beautiful book that I drew a lot of my information from. And anybody interested in Omaha history needs to take a look at O and C B, Omaha and Council Bluffs Streetcar Railway book uh, by Richard Orr. It is 
definitely the bee's knees. I have a link to it on my article about streetcars in North Omaha at NorthOmahaHistory.com. There's also a link to a 1950s film that Richard Orr made uh, all about streetcars in Omaha. And you can get a clear vision of it because here they are running around, trolleys dinging, people getting on and off. It was all filmed in the 19, early 1950s, late 1940s. By that time, North Omaha streetcars were completely mature. I mean, the whole process, the whole system was intact. It was moving along grandly. There was a Omaha Street Railway Company barn at 20th and Nicholas, which is Florence Boulevard and Nicholas Streets, that was just actually just torn down this year. Built in 1882, this company barn was used for about 40 years, and then it was sold to a lumber company called Micklin that turned it into a hardware store that was the main hardware store for much of North Omaha for more than 50 years. And Micklin actually just closed the facility in the last several years, and then it was just torn down earlier this year. The actual original 1882 building. So a great loss for Omaha history, but definitely a mark on the streetcars in North Omaha. I mentioned the Omaha and Council Bluff Street Railway Company shop at 26th and Lake uh, that still stands today. A person can go and look at it. But the other shop worth knowing about and really acknowledging was the gigantic streetcar barn that was once located at 24th and Ames. This beautiful, beautiful building was built in the 1890s and housed dozens of streetcars. It took up a quarter of a city block and the entire half length of a block right there at 24th and Ames on the southeast corner. And streetcars came from all over North Omaha to uh, store there and, and be prepared for the next day, every single day. The streetcar lines around North Omaha really emanated from that one place. And that streetcar facility went, was operational all the way into the 1950s, from, from the 1890s to the 1950s, and uh, was definitely one of the main features in Omaha. These streetcars, you know, Steve, one of the interesting things about streetcars in Omaha is that they really formed the nucleus of transportation around the community. The street, the car culture in Omaha, broad streets, fast moving cars, people driving themselves individually wherever they want to go. That didn't come around fully until the 1920s. There's some research being done right now by one of uh, my amateur historian friends, Jody Lavallo. And Jody has discovered that uh, that street, that car culture really wasn't very intact uh, until the 20s when uh, horses suddenly evaporated from Omaha. They'd already gone on from the streetcars, but by that point, uh, you know, we still had wagons being pulled around town. We still had different services being using horses, but they were all gone by the 20s. We then had individual cars everywhere, and streetcars became more and more um, kind of preempted by the use of individual cars by the 1950s. At that same point, white flight was taking hold in North Omaha, and people were moving away. The streetcar technology was replaced by buses with intention by the Omaha Transit Authority uh, in the, the mid-1950s. They actually shut down all streetcar service and said, okay, nobody's going to ride these anymore. Now we're all going to use buses. There's a lot of talk nationally about why that happened uh, in different cities. Um, there's different mention about the influence of the automobile industry, the influence of the petroleum industry. I don't know the answer to those questions. What I do know is that in 1955, streetcars went offline. Until then, every major intersection in North Omaha, including 24th and Fort, 20, 30th and Fort, Florence, the whole 30th Street strip in Florence, uh, 42nd and Grand, uh, 39th, or 37th and Military, 40th and Hamilton, all of these different locations, they were 24th and Lake, of course, they were all fed by streetcars and really brought people into those intersections. When streetcars went away, those intersections lost their prominence. They lost their importance. And eventually, the entire white flight happened and North Omaha became more and more abandoned. Streetcars didn't run the streets after 1955 and their prominence was really, it really diminished. There's so much more to say about streetcars and, and their prominence and their roles. I think one of the most important things that I could mention is that a lot of people eventually became a little bit resentful about the streetcars. They took up a lot of space where cars were supposed to go. They took up a lot of um, time for, getting, for waiting for the streetcar, for getting off on the streetcars, for hoping that the streetcar would run to where you needed to, and then trying to figure out how to get to where you needed to go if the streetcar didn't take you there. 
So buses did have their roles because they could become more ubiquitous. Ironically, today, if you look at a map of streetcars in uh, 1950 in Omaha and buses in 2017, you'll see that they kind of travel the same pathways. So uh, convenience, maybe there's more buses, maybe there's better schedules, but it's hard to say. On the um, NorthOmahaHistory.com website, you can find maps, you can find uh, newspaper advertisements, all kinds of different things promoting uh, the railway. I even have an old uh, stock certificate in the Omaha and Council Bluff Street Railway Company posted there for people to see. So there's lots of ephemera. There's lots of different things. People love to show off their streetcar tokens uh, from the streetcar company. And everybody has an uncle who used to work as a streetcar conductor in Omaha. And uh, yeah, there's lots of cool history. But it's fun to share. It's fun to know about. And it's fun to imagine what Omaha was when those streetcars roamed. So that's a little history of what that looked like in North Omaha. Thanks for listening to the North Omaha History Podcast with noted author and historian Adam Fletcher Sassy. Join us next week as Adam takes you on another guided tour through Omaha's dynamic past.